I'm now pleased to invite Ms. Julia Gleden, Corporate uh, Vice President for Microsoft Worldwide Public Sector, to share her observations and comments with us. We run a little bit over the time of her. So, Ms. Gleden, we will take a little bit extra um, for you to finish the remarks, but please, please be aware of it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, public sector friends and family from around the world, I'm honored to join you here today to be part of the 20th anniversary of the UN's commitment to helping member states improve e-government service capacity and delivery. Over the past decade, I've had the privilege of working closely on a number of esteemed expert working groups and to see firsthand the way in which the survey's insights, operations, and findings have supported governments everywhere in their quest to leave no one behind, to deliver services for all, and to accelerate achievement of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. I've constantly been impressed by the way in which this survey is regularly updated to reflect new emerging technologies and trends, including the shift toward the term digital government. In this latest, and I must say most beautifully accessible survey, I've been struck by and loved the observation, quote, digital government is not an end, it's a means to ultimately making life better for all. I could not agree more, and I believe this statement underscores the essence of purpose-driven government, a phrase coined by Mohammed J. Sear from EY, which exemplifies our shared sustainable development goals during this decade of action. Government is a platform, multi-channel integration, whole of society, not just whole of government, data and people-centric, not just tech-centric. These are just a few of the trends which caught my eye as I read this year's survey and reflected, reflected on the shift we've seen from simply digitizing the status quo to the goal of delivering sustainable, inclusive, and equitable services to everyone, everywhere. A goal I'm proud to say very much echoes Microsoft's own core mission to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. In this spirit, I was especially pleased to learn from the 2020 survey that today 80% of member states now offer specific digital services for youth, for women, for older people, for persons with disability, for migrants, for the poor, we have much work to do as we've heard throughout the discussion today, but it is truly inspiring to see digital being deployed to help those most in need. I'd be remiss as our discussion today has, re has um, revealed in reflecting on the achievements of digital government over the past 20 years. I did not contextualize these achievements in relation to the current COVID crisis which predominates all of our discussions. Digital technologies have played an increasing role in helping government address pressing global challenges from managing migration and protecting the environment to helping citizens stay safe and protected. Without a doubt, however, one of the biggest and I would argue most successful tests of digital government has been the way in which it's played a vital role in helping to hold the fabric of civil society together in the face of an unprecedented crisis. When COVID first struck, our CEO, Satya Nadella, so presciently observed, we are all digital first responders now. Meaning in essence that we in the tech industry are the first responders to the first responders. That all of us in tech have a vital role to play in helping to fulfill the public sector mission to ensure the health, education, and safety of people everywhere. I'd like to take a few brief moments here, if I may, to, sh to share some reflections based on my own work throughout the crisis and the way in which technology was able to support the public sector during its hour of need. When the crisis first struck, innovation barriers came down at an unthinkable rate. Sacha himself observed that he saw more transformation in two months than in the past two years. A colleague in Sweden observed that he saw his entire country digitized in just seven days. Under the cloud of crisis, the risk of doing nothing outpaced the risk of doing something wrong. Sarah Paquet, EVP for Shared Services Canada, recently shared with me, in the midst of crisis, a planned three-year rollout of remote working was delivered over a weekend in mid-March. It's within this context that we saw cloud, data, and AI come together in new ways to enable governments 
keep citizens informed, as we've discussed, to deploy and stay connected with first responders, to empower healthcare workers to deliver virtual assistance. I'd go so far as to say that from the earliest days of the crisis, we saw data, a theme throughout the survey this year, come into its own as a national asset. Taking just one example, around the world, chatbots were rapidly embraced as we learned in real time the way in which they can gather, process, and learn from data to quickly respond to and even resolve inquiries. After this initial phase of the crisis, we then saw agile in action as public sector agencies everywhere rapidly embraced technology to ensure, to ensure continuity of basic operations. In Italy, the Ministry of Justice quickly eased regulation and deployed remote working to enable court cases to proceed without interruptions. This is a trend now being adopted by an increasing number of countries, including the Philippines, where leaders praised the way in which technology enabled the legal system to keep operating and innocent people to go free. And of course, education. While there are disparities to address, what could possibly be more important than ensuring that leaders, learners of all ages continue to learn? Around the world, we saw a truly remarkable embrace of remote learning by governments everywhere, including the UAE, which shifted an entire country, 1.3 million learners from classroom to online learning in a matter of weeks. Now, in what we hope is the last and final phase of this crisis, the recovery phase, we're seeing a shift toward whole of society and government as a platform, as member states everywhere break down traditional silos, collaborate across government agencies, and harness the power of data to deliver social value whether in the form of distributing funds to help people keep food on the table or searching for much needed COVID treatments and vaccines. We're also seeing innovative new partnerships emerge to address the vital need for new capacities and skills in the post-COVID era. LinkedIn, GitHub, and Microsoft, for example, have come together to help 25 million students and workers prepare for the future of work. From the printing press to email, from paper to websites, from queuing to immediate resolution, despite the work that still needs to be done, 20 years of UN benchmarking shows that governments have always been shaped by advances in technology. Thanks to the successful delivery of countless digital services during the COVID crisis, it's fair to say that new and emerging technologies are in the process of driving another fundamental shift in the way the whole of government works. With public sector more open than ever before, to embracing new methodologies like Agile, new tools like data, and new uh, technologies like cloud and AI, I truly believe that the future has never been brighter for digital government. It's worth repeating UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez's um, comments, the post-COVID-19 world will be different and much more digital than before. It is now up to us all to come together to embrace the combined power of human innovation and technology during this, the UN Decade of Action, to harness the full promise and potential of digital to deliver public services that are truly sustainable, truly inclusive, and truly available to all. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you here today.